say, when I went out to my first Brooks County uh, Democratic Committee meeting, I got into the room, there was about 30, 35, 40 people there, and a guy named Tom Horton, the secretary, shake his hand and says, hey, Bill, we're not going to let you talk because you're 2018. We're going to have the 2017 folks uh, talk. But also, he stopped, looked around, he said, I don't think there's anyone here from the 15th district. I said, well, I'd like to be around people, so it's fine. I happened to sit down at the table, and an older gentleman there, I asked him, where are you from? What district? He said, 15. And I died and went to heaven. But anyway, my name is Bill Lyman. At least he said, 10 minutes. All right, I just want to, I want to make you, uh, or give you some information about myself, so you have an idea of who I am and what I've done with my life. Uh, I am a, in terms of my family, I'm married, I have six children. The oldest one is a step. The youngest one just uh, evacuated from around West Palm Beach. She's eight months pregnant, and she's had a couple issues where she'll have a C-section on my birthday, October 2nd. But the kids chose, she and her fiance chose to go to his parents, who reside in Kentucky. So they're driving up to Kentucky to be out of the storm, but as a nurse, as a registered nurse, I'm a little nervous about the ride with the stress. It's, but she's 22 and he's 25. And I think when I was that age, I thought I'd work with him. So they did it in the same boat. And anyway, uh, in, term, in terms of uh, employment, I'm a retired steel worker. I worked for Bethlehem Steel. I worked in the plant. I started as a shovel guy. I was there for 27 years. I ended up as a, a, what they call a craft tested. Machinist A, that's not an apprentice, a journeyman. I happen to take some tests, and I pass the tests. Uh, I also, uh, equally importantly, if not more, as I, as I uh, grow older, I was a, a very active union official in the United States of America, Local 2590. Right. While there, I ended up, to make a long story short, with my union experience, I ended up as a grievance committee man, a life member of the uh, United States Workers of America. We have a lot of work to do uh, to resurrect organized labor. I think the last number I saw is down to 7% of the private industry is organized. It's awful. They have beaten us down. The corporations and, and the, the Fox News Network and other uh, propaganda outlets have beaten us down so bad. Uh, you can't get minimum wage is where it's at. It's awful. That's at $7.25 an hour. Uh, I really believe that. We need to work in press for that $15 an hour living wage. If we had a $15 an hour wage, you wouldn't have people like Trump around because those folks would be a lot happier. They'd have some money and they would be able to live the so-called American dream. Uh, you, you, you look at Seattle, the experience in Seattle, minimum wage of $15 an hour. Others are paying up to $20 an hour. Let's call them unskilled. I've never really liked the skilled, unskilled. Uh, Division of you know, labor kind of is to be so divisive and it creates gradients that maybe aren't quite as helpful when we're trying to stick together and move things forward. But that's something that has to be done. It's very enormously important. Uh, it can be done. You'll hear from the Chamber of Commerce and other folks oh my God, you're going to lose jobs. These kids won't find jobs, blah, blah, blah. It's all BS. Those are folks that, some of those folks, believe it or not, the last one I heard of that admitted guy named Dick Army from Texas. He was what I call the penny guy. You pull the penny out of your pocket and you say, and you say, if you're like him, none of us in this room is like him. He said, here's what the minimum wage, but market driven was a penny, and they could get away with it. They could it. That's how that's how these folks think. That's what we're up against. We're against up against folks that are very selfish in their orientation. And you talk about the white supremacy issue, uh, that's, in, to my mind, is almost in near full bloom for this, for this administration. Uh, you see, he, he, it's a weak and a, uh, and a nod to these hateful people, these are un-American people. I hope that if you are ready, if any of these fascist, Nazi, anti-American people will permit to demonstrate, we down here do what they did. 20 or 25 folks show up to demonstrate it's hateful, disgusting people who should be deported. Those are folks you ought to deport. 20,000 people show up. And you don't fight with them. You don't 
Don't throw stones at them. You only got to call them names. You can call them on America. You show up and you just look at them. Like, okay, I gotta keep them up. Okay, now in terms of my uh, experience as an, as an elected official, I was very successful in life staying off the police plot. And I did it this way. I've been a councilman, I was a council member for six years. I was the mayor of my hometown for 10 years. I got on and elected at large seat in the United County uh, Commissioner. I did that for a couple of years. I worked out of town, I worked in Texas and Florida for a little bit. Came back, I got on to currently sit on the White House County School Board as a director. They recently elected me well, about a year and a half ago. Uh, treasure, that's a good political story. There's not enough time for it. Politics on the school board, believe it or not, it's not really white. You go figure. Um, so I, I look at that, that that's, to, for me, it has been an eye opener. It's been four different offices, four different tones, if you will, or responsibilities, and it's given me a wide experience, and I think for me, an understanding of, of the political situation at the state level uh, and at the local level. Somebody said the local levels of uh, elections are important. Guys, this is the most, they in many ways, the local elections touch your lives more than all the others. They're important. It's, it's a river gentleman here running for South Whitehall uh, Township Commissioner, Mark. Mark, to me, we were out knocking on doors with him one day in canvassing. It's very important. Somebody said they go on weekends. That's great. Mark is a bellwether we're looking for. We need to win things in 2017 that we haven't won. This gentleman, what was the last time a Democrat was on, on the Board of Commission? 12 years ago. He's a bellwether. We're working with a guy in the Lehigh County District 1 that has never had a Democrat represent that since the county went home rule charter. I think it was 1978. So he's a bellwether. We get wins like that that should energize people. All these groups, the whole host of groups, like Indivisible Perks and Make the road, and there's a group called Roar, Fierce. Well, I'm hoping that some, some, at some point, and maybe they're already, they're kind of connected because they have different, a little bit different persuasion, a little bit different demographics, and they got to link up. And because we need a powerful turnout, we need a big wave in 2017. Now, uh, 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 an issue as I'm hoping someone asks this question. Uh, we need. I work. I work now. I'm, I'm a registered nurse. I have three associate degrees, one from Penn State, two from Northampton Community College, one of which is my nursing degree. I have a bachelor, a BA from Moravian College, and another major in psychology and sociology. I have a master's degree in healthcare administration from St. Francis University out in Julian, Illinois, and I have my second last course from my BSN from Eastern New Mexico University. So that helped keep me off the police block, studying all that. Uh, I hope that we, I, I work in working in healthcare. I'm the director of inpatient uh, psychiatric services at Easton Hospital. Tired from there, Valley, did a similar job there. Now two minutes away. Thank you. Uh, and and I, 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 I see up close and personal what this is. And I have to say, I have to say it like it is a disgusting health insurance industry that we have. We waste so much time, and it's not wasting time with Medicare. Now, wasting time with Medicaid, it's wasting time with private health insurance companies. We sit there in our meetings, uh, uh, you know what, the, the uh, companies, they're not paying, they're not paying anyone person suicidal. You have to spend an enormous amount of time, they have all sorts of barriers, it's a constant struggle, it has to end. There's a group called Lehigh Valley Medicare for All, there's a bunch of people, uh, Mark and I will be hosting one at the Steelworkers Union at the end of the month, Union Hall, if you have anything like that out here, come up to Lehigh County. Uh, please don't believe the, the, uh, the lies that we can't afford it and we can't do it. We can't. We need to do that. It. It'll help business. It'll take the burden of, of, of business not being able to be wage. One of the reasons minimum wage is where it's at is because the company, we, we run a company, our costs go up. We want to give these folks our employees, we want to give them a raise. Can't, well, your insurance is going up, you got to pay this, you're going to have to pay more, and the raise is 1% this so year, that's it. A lot of time, 30 seconds. Thank you all, really thank you all for coming out. Thank you for the work you do, it's enormously important. You're welcome. Are there any questions?